Go to Lesher Bach is a tome of a book by Douglas Hofstadter about the incompleteness theorem and its philosophical implications on math and existence as we know it. Rick and Morty is a TV show starring Mr. Poopy Butthole. Ooh, wee! Whatever you want, Rick, we're here to help! Go to Lesher Bach and Rick and Morty both feature television sets which get cable from different dimensions. Let's talk about it. GEB alternates between discourse on formal logic and dialogues between Greek warrior Achilles and a turtle. Before Hofstadter discusses the lack of inherent meaning in mathematical symbols, Achilles and the turtle have a foot race to settle Zeno's paradox. Before Hofstadter discusses recursion, Achilles and the turtle read dialogues within dialogues. Before Hofstadter discusses flexibility in artificial intelligence, Achilles and the turtle watch a TV set which shows footage from every conceivable reality. Rick and Morty have the same TV set, and they use it to watch Alien Invasion, Tomato Monster, Mexican Armada Brothers who are just regular brothers running in a van from an asteroid and all sorts of things, the movie. Two brothers. It's just called Two Brothers. But like GEB uses a turtle and Achilles to spoon-feed you self-reflection, Rick and Morty's absurdism must signify the worldview it presents, right? Nobody exists on purpose. Nobody belongs anywhere. Everybody's gonna die. Come watch TV. I don't know if show writers Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon have read or heard of Godel Escher Bach, but it's where I'd like to start. G.E.B. is perhaps best summarized when Turtle explains to Achilles a trick he's been playing on their friend Crab. Crab buys record players so expensive and so fancy that they can make any possible noise. Turtle cheekily tests them with records whose noises are designed to destroy those record players. A record player which can play any possible noise can obviously make the noise designed to blow itself up. Crab could buy a crappy record player too primitive to destroy itself, but Crab doesn't want a crappy record player. He wants a perfect one. And a perfect record player will always be able to self-destruct, because the inability would be an imperfection. Says Turtle, it is simply an inherent fact about record players that they can't do all that you might wish them able to do. Likewise, says Hofstadter, Kurt Gödel's incompleteness theorem observes that any useful system of formal logic undermines its own usefulness. There will always be true statements within the system which that system cannot prove true. As a mathematician, this is maddening. We wish logic was the solution to all our problems, but logic itself demonstrates it is not. Intelligence, says Hofstadter, isn't just the ability to operate within a system, but also the ability to step outside the system. We need to set aside our worldview to check if the worldview is working or not. Formal systems don't obey your interpretation of them. No matter how you interpret a formal system, it'll keep chugging along. And logic ain't gonna change, so your interpretation better be flexible enough to accept what logic gives you, and creative enough to make something out of it. We get meaning from meaningless symbols by playing make-believe with them. You gotta play what if to understand what is. But if you're willing to step outside the system, how do you know when to stop? Is it appropriate to imagine a hypothetical square circle? What would it mean to imagine a square circle? Is saying the phrase a square circle good enough? If we can't conceive of a square circle, does that mean it's impossible to do so, or are we just thick? To introduce odd hypotheticals, Hofstadter has Turtle and Achilles watch a football game on Crab's Magic TV. The TV doesn't just show the game. It can step outside reality to show hypothetical ways the game could have gone. What if that tackle connected? What if it was raining? What if footballs were spheres instead of eggs? What if it was played on the moon? 
These are outlandish, but imaginable, and even visualizable. But we 3D mortals can't visualize four-dimensional space, so Hofstadter plays a dirty trick. The gang watches a football game with four spatial dimensions, where the yard lines are actually 2D planes. No matter how much we try to step out of our worldview, we can't visualize this. But Hofstadter has no issues writing that the gang can see it. Just like I can't imagine a square circle, but I could imagine a character who can. So, you see, while we cannot imagine the world of four dimensions, we can certainly think about it perfectly well. Worse still, at the end of the dialogue, we learn Crab never had this magic TV after all. The dialogue was a hypothetical of what it would be like if he did have the TV. But the dialogue was already a hypothetical. It was never anything but fiction. All hypotheticals are fiction. Conceivable hypotheticals and inconceivable hypotheticals are equally empty. Anyone can write anything. So to understand what's really real, we've got to step out of our own notion of stepping out. Let's back up and talk Rick and Morty. In the first interdimensional cable episode, Rick delineates between channels he likes, irreverent nonsense, and channels he doesn't like, which are about topics relevant to the family. Now, who wants to watch random, crazy TV shows from different dimensions? And, and, and then who wants to narcissistically obsess about their alternate selves? The I want to obsess obsessed. about myself. <sighs> so, like GEB, there's a line in the sand between useful hypotheticals and useless hypotheticals. Some hypotheticals are more quote-unquote important than others, even though all of them are fiction. The useless ones are usually pretty strange. Huh? Seems like TV from other dimensions has a somewhat looser feel to it. Yeah, it's got an almost improvisational tone. But the useful ones get the Sanchez family to bond. By reviewing hypothetical realities, they learn to appreciate the reality they have. Of course, from our perspective, that reality is also hypothetical. The cartoon, Rick and Morty, is itself broadcast from another dimension, so to speak. Whether you mean the fictional dimension, C-137, or the very real dimension of fiction. Rick and Morty is a hypothetical reality we watch in order to appreciate the reality we have. Just like the fictional turtle and Achilles help us accept the implications of the incompleteness theorem. Rick and Morty's main theme seems to be about meaninglessness. Oh, think about it! The cartoon is absurd, and the cartoons within the cartoon are absurd. The emptiness is the point. How does Rick deal with emptiness? He kinda doesn't. What is my purpose? You pass butter. Oh my god. Yeah, welcome to the club, pal. Rick likes the nonsense channels because he's jaded by the emptiness of so-called useful systems. All of it's useless to him, so why not watch a commercial for real fake doors? Everything is a real fake door. So how does Hofstadter deal with the incompleteness theorem? Well, he wrote a whole book about it, how meaning arises from meaningless formal systems. Even though hypotheticals are empty, we can only hope to get meaning from empty symbols with hypotheticals. Hypotheticals are all we ever get. To put it his way, propositional calculus is done purely typographically. There is nobody down in there thinking about the meaning of the strings. It is all done mechanically, thoughtlessly, rigidly, and even stupidly. If a cloud is not hanging over the mountain, then the moonlight is penetrating the waves of the lake. This may not be enlightenment, but it is the best the propositional calculus has to offer. Hofstadter brings up Zen Buddhism as a symbol for stepping outside systems to observe them from above. Zen approaches emptiness and contradiction using cones, questions with no final answer meant just to kick you out of your skull. 
Hofstadter isn't talking about Zen right here, but listen to this and tell me it doesn't sound like Rick Sanchez describing himself like a pretentious guru on a mountaintop. <clears throat> There are cases where only a rare individual will have the vision to perceive a system which governs many people's lives, a system which had never before even been recognized as a system. Then such people often devote their lives to convincing other people that the system really is here, and that it ought to be exited from. But you have to understand that as far as grandpa's concerned, you're both pieces of shit. Yeah, I can prove it mathematically. Actually, let me grab my whiteboard. This has been a long time coming anyway. Hofstadter explains he's not saying Zen Buddhism is correct or the real religion. But at the same time, he says GEB is a statement of his religion. Maybe it's a statement of his lack of religion, just like Rick and Morty could be said to advertise a specific brand of atheism, simultaneously acknowledging the meaninglessness of life and the power of family or whatever. Gödel Escherbach and Rick and Morty both explain that any source of meaning can be stepped out of and reevaluated. In that sense, meaning only exists as much as we can share it using empty words. Now give me my f***ing enchilada. I think I'm thinking about this too much. It's all I do here at Thinkster. I think what I'm trying to say is that a Pulitzer-winning treatise on formal logic and the adventures of Mr. Poopy Butthole talk about the same emptiness. I mean, of course they do. There's only one emptiness to go around. Likewise, Hofstadter says Gödel and Escher and Bach circle the same drain. Gödel's incompleteness theorem is the formal math version of an Escher drawing, which makes you scratch your head and laugh. Bach's music plays with emptiness by establishing a pattern and then experimenting with it in a fugue. The same pattern played again in different ways, interacting with itself and copies of itself. That sounds familiar, right? Rick interacts with copies of himself, and it's arguably the point of the cartoon. Close Encounters of the Rick Kind is an animated fugue. When Rick and Morty run through universes where humans in chairs order pizzas on phones, and then chairs on humans order phones on pizzas, that's a fugue. It's a joke, it's nonsense, it's absurd, but it's an absurd nonsense joke which points to everything being an absurd nonsense joke. It shows the audience how to step out and why. Maybe the show writers Harmon and Royland have read G.E.B. and are purposefully riffing on it. Maybe they haven't, and independently inventing Hofstadter's TV just shows it's a pretty solid metaphor. The point is, Harmon, Royland, hire me. My next video will be about hell. I think hell is interesting as hell. If you want to see it, subscribe. But remember, to click on the subscribe button, you'll have to move the cursor halfway and then halfway again, and then halfway again, and so on. Is motion even possible? The only way to find out is to try it for yourself. Bye bye Also, think about this. If this is a square, and we decide that a circle means the points equidistant from a central point, then we can make a square circle by changing what distance means. Sure, Euclidean distance is pretty helpful sometimes, a squared plus b squared equals c squared and all that, but a taxi cab driver in New York might care more about distance along right angles. Then this is a square circle. I wouldn't call it that in an everyday conversation, but it's true given the conventions we decided upon. In the end, conventions are all we have. Good luck out there.